Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to dealing with materials dot data. In this course, we are going to learn about collection, analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. So, we have been looking at error and its uh, propagation. Uh, in the last session, we looked at how error propagates and uh, we just looked at how the error uh, in one quantity uh, namely conductivity propagates uh, when you do um, the conductivity measurements using eddy current method. Uh, in terms of the thickness of uh, the, the skin. So, we did this uh, calculation in the previous session, uh, but we want to deal with a slightly more complicated uh, uh, propagation uh, of error and that is what we are going to do in this session. So, this is about combining the uncertainties and uh, how do we combine uncertainties if uh, suppose we have a quantity f and uh, this uh, quantity f depends on these uh, variables x, y, z, etc. And uh, if you assume that the uncertainties in x, y, z, etc. are independent, then the variance in the quantity f uh, is given by this uh, formula where you take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, square it, multiply by the um, variance and uh, again take the um, partial derivative with respect to y and uh, multiply by the variance uh, and, and so on. So, you can do this and if suppose these uh, quantities are not independent, then uh, you have to take this uh, um, um, covariances also into account. So, it is uh, dou f by dou x whole squared sigma x squared plus dou f by dou y whole squared sigma y squared and 2 times dou f dou x dou f dou y covariance of x y and so on. So, this is how the combining of uncertainties is done. And in the case of independent quantities, if suppose f depends only on x and y, uh, then you can uh, learn how to combine the uncertainties uh, uh, in this fashion. So, it is um, um, so, so, if it is plus or minus then the uncertainty is just added. If it is multiplication or division, then it is the relative uncertainty that gets added and uh, x y power n or x by y power n is also relative uncertainty uh, except that this factor of n shows up here. And if it is uh, f is dependent on x logarithmically, then it is uh, 1 by x um, is the sigma f, uh, it, it is a sigma x by x and f if it is exponential x then you can see sigma f is f times sigma x. So, these are the formula that one can use, but in all this we are assuming that the uncertainties in x, y is independent. If it is not so, you have to also consider the covariances. Now, let us consider the hall patch relation between grain size d and the flow stress sigma of d. Sigma of d is known to be sigma naught plus k d to the power minus half, uh, where k is the hall patch coefficient. This uh, relationship assuming that it is d to the power minus half is due to hall patch. So, this constant that you will get if you fit to this uh, uh, function form is known as hall patch coefficient and sigma 0, zero is the materials constant for initiating the dislocation motion. Now, as you can see there could be uncertainty in many of these quantities. For example, there could be uncertainty in the k that you have evaluated there could be uncertainty in the sigma 0 that you have evaluated. Obviously, we also know that the grain size is not a single number. Uh, so, it has uncertainty. Uh, in addition, we also know that uh, uh, it also has uh, different distributions. I mean, when we say uncertainty in k and sigma naught, for example, we are assuming that it is uh, random noise. So, the, the, the distribution of the error is uh, normal distribution. Uh, but that need not be so uh, like we have seen in one of the earlier sessions uh, that the grain size distribution can follow 
um, a non-normal distribution and, and in the case we saw it was beta. So, in such cases uh, how do we deal with and typically sometimes you will also see that the grain size actually follows log normal distribution and if so how do we get the error that you get in the flow stress. This, uh, this session is about propagation of error, we have error in these quantities, if we know how much is the uncertainty can we say anything about the uncertainty in this quantity. That is what we are trying to calculate. Um, and let us do the first one, let us say that uh, um, the k value is, uh, this is for uh, copper, uh, the k value is 112 plus or minus 2 and this is calculated assuming that uh, your grain sizes are given in uh, microns and uh, sigma naught is 18.6 plus or minus 1.7. So, this is the sigma uh, for k and this is the sigma for uh, sigma naught and so we want to find out the uncertainty in the flow stress. Uh, we are going to assume that these two uh, uncertainties are independent and so it is one of addition. So, we can uh, do this in R right. So, we want to say k is 112 and uncertainty in k is uh, let us get this. 2 and S naught is 18.6, right? 18.6 and D S naught is 1.7, 1.7. Okay. So, now we want to calculate the uncertainty in sigma and uh, because these quantities uh, um, are in addition all you need to do is to uh, look at the corresponding formula. So, it tells you that ok let us let So, if it is x plus or minus y then the sigma f squared is nothing but sigma x squared plus sigma y squared. So, that is the uncertainty. Okay. So, so the uncertainty just gets added up. So, you will get square root of uh, 2 squared plus um, 1.7 squared. Okay. So, that is of the order of 2.6. So, that is what we are finding here. Okay. Now, what happens? Um, if suppose we have uncertainty in k and d, let us consider a quantity f which is the flow stress for a given grain size minus sigma naught. So, let us consider that quantity and let us look at the uncertainty. In this case, this is of the form uh, x by y to the power n. So, and, and let us say the d is 5.3. and the uncertainty in D is 1.2. Okay. So, in this case uh, we have found that uh, the uncertainty has to be calculated using this formula. So, the relative uncertainty is square root of sigma x by x whole squared plus n squared sigma y by y whole squared and sigma x happens to be in this case k and y happens to be d. So, so it is k by d k whole squared plus uh, n is half, so it is 1 by 4 multiplied by d by d d whole squared and the entire thing you have to take the square root. Um, so, this is the quantity we have. Okay, there seems to be some problem, sorry. 
So, it is the other way around it is d k by k d k by d whole squared. So, it is about 11.4 percent and this quantity is nothing but the um, delta f by f. So, if you multiply this quantity by f and you can evaluate f for a given set of parameters, uh, then this uh, delta f, f happens to be about 7.7. 7. So, so, you can calculate the f, uh, let us say that we know that it is S0 uh, plus k divided by square root of d. Um, so, that is f. So, if you multiply f by 11.5 then um, you get 11.5 uh, percent right. So, you sorry. So, it is 7.7 percent. So, that is what is shown here. So, you get uh, the um, error to be uh, about 7.7. .7. And of course, you can cal now consider the error in all the three quantities sigma naught, k and d and can ask the question what is the uncertainty in sigma. You can do the calculations in series. You can calculate first the uncertainty that is coming from here. And how does that uncertainty then add to the uncertainty that is coming from here and uh, then you can get the total uncertainty in sigma naught. But because uh, the, the error that you are going to get from here is relative and uh, the other one is uh, just the sigma that you are going to get, it is going to become much more complicated. But the easier to follow is the partial derivative formula. We have seen that uh, the error for example or uncertainty in the flow stress should be dou sigma by dou sigma naught in and the uncertainty in sigma naught multiply plus dou sigma by dou k uh, into this should be uncertainty in k del k plus dou sigma by dou uh, d into del d. So, if you do that then you know that in this case uh, for example, it is sigma naught. So, this derivative just gives uh, del sigma naught itself and in this case uh, um, it will give you the this root d remains. So, k just gives you uh, del k uh, because 1 by root d del k is what it becomes and in this case uh, k del d will remain and d will give you minus half d to the power minus 3 by 2. So, that comes down. So, 2 d to the power 3 by 2 because we have taken mod. So, you can now add all these uncertainties. We know that this is 1.7 for example and we know that this is 2 divided by square root of 5.3 and this is for example, 112 multiplied by 1.2 divided by 2 uh, 5.3 to the power 3 by 2. So, we can evaluate this quantity. So, let us do that and find out how much is the error. So, we want to do um, the, the so 1.7 1.7 plus uh, the the uncertainty in k that is 2 divided by square root of 5.3, 2 divided by square root of 5.3 and then we have k which is 112 and uh, multiplied by the uncertainty in d divided by 2 into um, 5.3 to the power 1.5 okay so you get about 8 and now you also know the relative values for example of this 8.1 uh, 1.7 comes from sigma naught and uh, 2 by square root of 5.3 um, that is about 0.8 comes from 
uh, this uncertainty which is in K and the remaining. So, you, if you have uh, about 1.7 plus uh, 0.8, so about 2.5, so the remaining 5.5 uh, comes from the other quantity, right. So, we can calculate this quantity and this is what the 5.5 comes to. So, you can also know that the uncertainties in D are giving you the uh, contribution. So, it is 5.5 divided by some 8.1. So, it is about 67, 68 percent contribution is coming from here and then so 1.7 divided by 8.1. So, that is another um, uh, 21. So, it is about 68 and 21. So, 89. So, remaining 11 is what is coming from this. So, that is 0 0.9 divided by 8.1. So, that is 11 percent. So, you can see the relative contribution uh, to the error also by doing this. So, what we are doing in this case is to use the formula and calculate the uncertainty. Of course, so we have we can now combine different things. You can assume one of the uncertainties to be 0 and you can find out what is the error that is coming. So, we know that it is 5.5 and this is about uh, uh, 11, um, uh, about 0.8. So, that is uh, 6.4 and uh, so, so you can calculate and if you assume that the only uncertainty is coming from uh, del D then you can calculate and, and so on and so forth. Of course, you can also uh, assume that the uncertainties are not independent and then if you know the uncertainty in sigma 0 k and d, how do we get the uncertainty in sigma? And uh, in, the, in that case, uh, it, you need to know the covariance uh, um, that is uh, contributing and for that we can do the Monte Carlo simulation. So, that is what I will show next. Let us uh, consider the um, and for Monte Carlo simulations, we are going to use the library propagate. Okay. Okay, we have the library propagate, and then we are going to let us consider these. So, what is this? So, we are going to assume that the error in k uh, is a normal distribution and the mean is 112 and standard deviation is 2 that we know. And in sigma naught again we are going to take a mean of 18.6 and standard deviation of 1.7 and again we are assuming that that is normally distributed. For starters we are also going to assume that the grain size is also normally distributed, it need not be. Uh, we will do log normal for example as one more case and uh, but but for starters let us assume that even d is normally distributed so the the other calculations that we have done so far we were assuming implicitly that this is also an error and so that has mean 5.3 and standard deviation 1.2 so we take all these uh, um, random variates that we have generated for these quantities and then we are going to use the Monte Carlo simulation using them and this is the expression S naught plus k d to the power minus 0 0.5 and we are then going to find out how much is the error that you get in the resultant quantity because of these variations. So, there is lots of information that uh, propagate gives. So, it gives you the means and the standard deviations so which is not uh, very uh, different from what we have found and from Monte Carlo simulation it gives you the means and uh, standard deviations. Um, so, that is also not very different from what you see and uh, what is this uh, degrees of freedom coverage factor etc. we will come back. Uh, uncertainty we have already found that it is of the order of uh, 11 um, we, we have found and the covariance matrix is given. So, it tells you uh, relative importance of these uh, off uh, um, diagonal terms. So, so you can see that uh, k sigma naught and d sigma naught these are the um, covariance values and, and uh, um, 
k d for example. So, they are all relatively small. So, the compared to these quantities uh, they are not uh, very big and you can also see the relative contribution of course, this we have seen it is um, uh, from these simulations you find that 88 percent comes from here about 8 percent comes from sigma naught and k contributes about 2 percent. So, in terms of uh, relative contribution again we see that uh, maximum contribution comes from d the next one comes from s naught uh, sigma naught and the third uh, is uh, from the k parameter. And uh, the skewness and uh, excess kurtosis uh, is uh, given here and uh, these some of these tests for normality these are uh, um, also things that we have not discussed yet like Kolmogorov Smirnov. Uh, we will come back to this uh, at a later point, but, uh, but using uh, such simulation again you can get the um, error propagation, right. So, this is what the information that we have gotten. Uh, now, you can do uh, one more thing, you can make sure that uh, the D distribution is not uh, normal but log normal ok. If suppose that is the case then what happens to your uh, error. So, you can do that uh, again the, the simulations are very helpful because uh, then you can assume any distribution uh, for the quantities and you can generate the variates and then use that in the simulations. So, the other quantities are the same k and s naught I am assuming that they are uh, normally distributed with the given mean values and standard deviations, but uh, the grain size I am going to assume log normal distribution uh, with a mean at log 5.3 and standard deviation of log 1.2. And using that as the parameters then we are going to do a Monte Carlo simulation run and we are going to get the information. Again we see that majority of the contribution comes from D. Uh, about 83 percent and this is about 12 percent and this is about uh, uh, sorry um, yeah. Um, so, th this is uh, 0 0.031 so it is about 3 percent. So, and the covariance matrix again you can see that they are not contributing much most of the contribution is uh, coming from the uh, variances. So, you can assume that the they are independent that is a fairly good approximation and uh, but you can see that the, the values that you get for example, for uh, mean is not changing much the standard deviation is certainly very different if you assume that it is uh, um, log normal distribution for the grain size. So, which is more meaningful, but we do not know in this case uh, when these parameters were obtained as not uh, k etcetera, what was the exact distribution of the grain size we do not know, uh, but it might be a good approximation to assume that it is log normal. If so, this uh, simulation then tells you how much is the error. So, to summarize uh, uh, what is it that we have done, um, we have found out how to calculate uh, error. Uh, when the function depends on more than one variable and we have calculated the error assuming that the uncertainties in these quantities are independent. When you do that there are formula that you can evaluate or you can use the partial derivative formula and directly evaluate the quantity and so in some cases you get the error to be um, uh, the, the uncertainty in some cases you get the relative. Uh, error or relative uncertainty delta f by f is the quantity that you get, but in either case you can find them out. Uh, but if you want to also include the, the covariances or incorporate distributions which are not normal for doing the error propagation, you can use the library propagate and you can carry out Monte Carlo simulations to get the error. So, this uh, sort of completes our session on descriptive data analysis. We have looked at how to describe data, how to plot data with error bars and also understand how the error propagation happens. And uh, with a summary session we are going to conclude this module and then we will move on to the probability distributions module. Thank you.